Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to the GSL English podcast. My name is, of course, Gideon, and it's that time of the week once again where I do my best to help you immerse yourself within the English language through listening to me natter on about a variety of different topics. So, if you are new here, you are warmly welcome to this little community that we have. But if you are a returning traveller on the journey of learning English, then thank you so much for joining me today. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I have already, I had already recorded half of this episode when I realised that I hadn't actually pressed record. I just had to do a make a little glimpse to make sure I had pressed record. Yeah. So this is the second time. But you know, maybe that gave me an opportunity to warm up. Maybe that one was just not meant to be. So this is the second time recording this intro and the first half of this podcast. I just wanted to share that with you because I've only just got over the frustration of that situation. It was uh, a real kick in the teeth. Let me just tell you that. And a kick in the teeth is just a real strong blow that can get you down. And I had a moment where I thought, nope, I'm not doing it. You know, I was really happy with that first half. And then I just thought I would check and I realized it wasn't recording. So I did have a moment, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. I had a moment of thinking, that's it. I'm out. I'm done. There's going to be no episode this week. But I went inside. I had a, a coffee an espresso pod, vanilla, if you were interested in the flavour. And I thought, nope, we're going to get back to it and we're going to get another episode out. So I think this is now episode 14 or 15. So that's 15 weeks in a row. So I'm kind of happy with that. But yeah, what are we talking about today? What are we talking about? Well, we're not going to look at how to learn English. I'd like to talk to you about something that is very close to my heart. Something that I feel very strongly about, and that is how to enjoy learning English. How to enjoy it. But why? Why have I chosen that topic today? Well, isn't it true that learning English really is a, a never-ending journey? There is never an end point where we think, ah, I've done it. I have learned English. It's over. That point never happens, even for native speakers like myself that enjoy studying the English language. That will never stop. As long as I want it to happen, I will always be on the journey of learning English. And that's especially true for those where it is a second or third language. If we want to keep on progressing, it is a constant journey. But for a journey to be interesting. We've got to enjoy it. We've got to enjoy the journey, enjoy the process. And I think sometimes that idea of enjoyment can be lost, particularly uh, for two reasons. One, we're struggling. We're at a point where we are just finding it really difficult to improve or there's certain areas of the English language we just always seem to get wrong, then we stop enjoying it. And the second area that I've noticed that this happens is when we've been doing it for a long time. We've been studying, doing the same things, same processes. We might be advanced, but that real passion, that real enjoyment that we had at the beginning is lost. So I'm going to give you some ways today to make sure you are enjoying it. Or if you have lost your enjoyment of learning and studying the English language, well, I'm going to give you some ways to kickstart that energy, that motivation and that love of learning that you might have originally had. But firstly, I wanted to ask you a question. When I say the words learn or study, how does it make you feel? Now, some people... And these people I am very 
jealous of. They say the word study and they, they rub their hands together and think, yes. Some people just absolutely love studying. Getting the pens, paper, highlights, doing, doing research and delving into topics. They really love that. And the idea of learning and absorbing information is what they thrive on. A friend of, at school of mine was like that. You know, he just, he just soaked up information like a sponge and he just loved learning and studying. I was never like that. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. School and I just did not mix. Not that I was badly behaved at school, but I just wasn't great at studying. Okay, my motivation perhaps was more on the social side of school, I will be honest with you. But I've never been that good at learning. I've never been that good at studying. I mean, as I've grown older and I'm now, you know, English teacher for over eight years, I do love the language. But I find it difficult to love studying. And I think a lot of people feel that way. You know, the idea of enjoying enjoyment and study it's difficult to to put those words together. And if you do feel that way, you're not alone. I think that's quite a common um, feeling to have. But I really feel that we need to enjoy learning the English language. So that's exactly what we are going to look at today. So I'm just going to give you some ideas. Um, But if you are, if you say, well, no, Gideon, I am enjoying the English language. I still want you to try these suggestions. I still want you to try them because mixing it up, changing up your study routine and your learning habits is never a bad thing. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Even if you are still enjoying it, give these options a go. So here's the first way that we can enjoy learning English. And that is this. I want you to try studying somewhere new. Okay, that's the first idea, to study somewhere new, because sitting in the same place, in the same room, at the same desk to study can get boring very quickly. I know I'm at this desk in in this lovely cabin every day, but I find that actually Uh, you know, apart from teaching private classes here and recording videos, if I'm going to study something, I need to go somewhere else because my brain doesn't engage here with study. If we are always studying at home, it can just get a little bit monotonous. And by monotonous, we kind of mean repetitive. So maybe to enjoy learning English, simply mix up the location. Now, that might be that it's just another room in the house. Great idea. So maybe you study in your bedroom, go downstairs or go across the hall to the living room, to your kitchen, wherever it is, and try studying in there. Sometimes a different atmosphere or a different four walls can really engage your brain in a different way. It's quite fascinating. But here's here's an idea to st- take it a step further. Maybe you could travel somewhere to study. Now, I know that for many, excuse me, I know that for many this isn't an option because life is extremely busy. But maybe it's something that we could squeeze in. Travel somewhere new to study. Maybe there's a library in your neighborhood. Maybe there's a coffee shop that you particularly like. Maybe there's a park near you that you could drive to. The change of scenery will improve your enthusiasm. Um, And it is also proven that a change of scenery and location will help you to improve memory, particularly if you consistently do it. For example, let's imagine that one week you decide to go to the park. Okay. And at the park, you study phrasal verbs. Let's take something simple like that. At the park, you study phrasal verbs. The phrasal verbs that you look at, you will associate with that park 
and it will help you to remember them. And then maybe the next week you go to a coffee shop and here you study grammar, let's say prepositions. Well, now you think back to prepositions, you think back to the coffee shop and you can remember exactly what you were learning. So it's not just the idea of a new environment, a new location to enjoy studying, but also it is a fantastic way of remembering what we have studied because your brain makes connections between what you are studying and where you are. When you study something different, you force your brain to make new connections to what you are studying, even if that is not intentional. And of course, the more connections your brain makes, the more likely you are to remember what you have learned. So that is the first way I would recommend, you know, if you want to start enjoying learning English is mix up the location. Go somewhere new. Perhaps think of one of your favourite places you like to go to. You know, take your phone, maybe take some a notepad and pen, just study. Or even take me on this podcast. Go for a walk and listen to this podcast. Go somewhere different. But mixing up the location is is a is a brilliant, brilliant way of enjoying studying because it's not boring anymore. We've got to keep it lively. We've got to keep it engaged. Okay, the second way that we can learn English is through games. Studying can sometimes have this very serious connotation. It can be a very serious thing that we have to take seriously. We, we sit down to the desk and we study. Well, that might be true, but I don't like doing that. I don't really like sitting down at a desk studying on my own, but I do like playing games. And I know actually from talking to many of you listening, I know you like to play games as well. So why not play games that will help us to learn English? And these are great because one, they engage our quick fire response. Often in games, you need to think on your feet, which means to think quickly. Well, what a great way to engage our our quick thinking in English. You have a social interaction if you are able to play with someone else. For example, here's a game that I would recommend playing. Scrabble. Have you ever played Scrabble? Do you know what Scrabble is? Well, Scrabble is a, it's a classic board game uh, in which players use random lettered tiles to create words in kind of like a crossword fashion. So I think you pick out seven tiles. So you have a little bag um, and you put your hand in blind. So you don't know what you're picking out. You pick out seven tiles and then you have to make a word from them. And you can only use the seven tiles that you have and each letter has points. So I think there's more vowels in there. So the vowels are less points. But if you take perhaps a letter like Z or are they are worth more points and then the more of those letters you're able to use in your words the more points you win and say let's imagine that we were playing together I spelt the word grass g-r-a-s-s -S. going off of one of those letters you would have to then write a word as long as a letter from my word was included within your word I feel like I've just really overcomplicated Scrabble <laughs> in that summary but it's a great way of just getting us thinking in English um, and it really does challenge you I'm not very good at Scrabble but it does challenge you to to think about spelling it challenges you to think about words that you've learned, vocabulary. And it's just brilliant. A great way of enjoying learning English. You can play Scrabble on your phone. There's one app called Words with Friends. Brilliant. You know, if you haven't got anyone to play with there, you can play with a stranger online. But I do highly recommend it. Even if you're taking private classes, you know, maybe mention to your teacher, you can play a little bit of Scrabble at the end of our class. Um, so I would recommend that. Another type of game that has kind of gone out of the window is flashcards. Flashcards, it's a, it's a traditional way of learning, but they're absolutely brilliant. So, for example, what you could do with a flashcard is 
on one side of a, of a card, however big you want it, you write down an idiom. Let's say a piece of cake, simple idiom, a piece of cake. On the back of that card, you have the definition. So throughout the process of preparing this, you might come up with 10 idioms. So you write them down. You write the, the idiom one side of a piece of card or paper. On the other side, you write the definition. Then either you either challenge yourself or you have a friend or family member challenge you. So they will pick up the flashcard. They'll either read the definition. You have to say the idiom or they will read the idiom and you say the definition. And you can do this with, a, you know, really absolutely anything. Vocabulary, phrasal verbs, famous quotes or texts. But again, it just mixes things up and, and it's, it's interactive. It's quick. We can do it with a friend. But also the great thing with flashcards is when we are preparing them, we're, we're learning through context. And it's just a great memory aid. So there's my, my second way to enjoy learning English. You know, chuck some games into your week. Scrabble. I don't know, even Monopoly. Play Monopoly, but you and your friends can only talk in English. Whatever it is, just make it fun. And flashcards. I know they're dated. I know it's a traditional way of learning, but I love them. I highly recommend. You know, there's nothing wrong with flashcards. Okay, the third way. I would recommend enjoying learning English is finding a speaking partner. Find someone that you are happy to speak with in English and find someone that you feel comfortable speaking in with English. So that might be a friend, might be somebody online or it might be a family member. But a speaking partner is brilliant because, of course, we try and have conversations in English with as many people as we possibly can. But with a speaking partner, you can engage in conversation. You can engage in discussions with the idea of using new expressions, of using new vocabulary. So, for example, with your speaking partner, whoever that is, you could say, right, on this week, on Friday at three o'clock, we're going to have our conversation. And the topic is going to be equality in business. OK, that's just a random topic I was thinking about. So then what you both do is you, you prepare some thoughts on it and you discuss equality in business. But with the idea of using new idioms in that discussion, it's almost like a training platform using new vocabulary and use that time to really express yourself or, or really try to express yourself clearly in the English language. And you can choose topics with your partner that you enjoy. If you like cars, talk about cars. If you like history, talk about history. Sometimes, yeah, go out of your comfort zone a little bit, try something new. But having a speaking partner, a regular speaking partner is brilliant because it's somebody that you feel comfortable with and it's somebody that you feel that you're okay trying new words with, new expressions with. So yeah, third way to enjoy learning English, find a speaking partner and talk to them regularly. OK, the fourth way I would recommend that you enjoy learning English. Now, this is an interesting one. Some of you might be comfortable with this. Some of you might not. And that is to sing. I kind of like singing, but I don't like singing in front of anyone. But that's OK. Get the karaoke machine out. Karaoke is where you sing along to a song and the, the text is on the screen. OK, <clears throat> let's be honest. This isn't going to make us fluent. This isn't going to automatically program some new vocabulary into our mind. But singing in English, particularly when we're reading along to the lyrics, it's just a great way of taking something in in English and enjoying it. You know, not everything has to be about absorbing as much information as we can. Just putting yourself within the within arm's reach of the English language is sometimes enough. So do that with your friends. Get the karaoke machine out and say, we are only going to do English songs. Some recommendations. Frank Sinatra, That's Life. Brilliant karaoke number. 
If you want to make a, a fool of yourself, Seer, any of Seer's songs. The Proclaimers I like, 500 Miles. Uh, bon Jovi, Living on a Prayer, Can't Go Wrong. Bit of Arctic Monkeys. Actually, I'd be really interested if you could send me an email or leave me a comment. At what is your karaoke song? I would love to know. Um, email gslenglish1 at gmail.com or let me know in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. What's your karaoke song? But why not give that a try? Do a bit of karaoke with your friends and family. You know, Don't take it seriously, but it's an enjoyable activity to do in English. So I highly recommend it. But also, sometimes you realise that the lyrics were not what you were singing at all. I've done that so many times. I'm singing along to a song and then I happen across the lyrics and I realise what I was singing was completely wrong. There was a song by Sum 41 called Fat Lip. I don't know if you know the band Sum 41. They did a song called Fat Lip. Um, now, I think the lyric is up above in my head or something like that. Above in, See, I still don't remember it. Above in my head instead of going under. So that is the lyric. But I always thought the lyric was like a bug in my head. So there's me like a bug in my head. And there was only one time that I was driving my friends around when I first passed my driving test and I sang it and he said, wait, 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 wait. What on earth did you just say? Like a bug in my head. Um, And it was not. I think it was up above or something like that. But all I know is I was singing it massively wrong. So karaoke also gives us an opportunity to realise all of the lyrics that we misunderstood. But it's just a fun way of you know, enjoying English. And that leads me on to my next point of how to enjoy English. And it is, don't take yourself too seriously. Don't take yourself too seriously. I, I kind of think this is true of a lot of areas of life, a lot of things in life. But sometimes we can take ourselves too seriously that we're, we're not willing to fail. We're not willing to look a bit silly sometimes, which is, oh, Okay. But if we take English too seriously, we, we focus on perfection. We focus on correctness. And not only does that make us feel uncomfortable, but also it makes those we're talking to feel a little bit uncomfortable. So, you know, sometimes just <sighs> put your shoulders down. Don't be so tense. And just, just enjoy English. Yeah, you're going to make mistakes. Yeah, you're not always going to pronounce words correctly. Yeah, your grammar's not always going to be perfect. Oh, I just moved my camera. Sorry about that. Yeah, your grammar's not always going to be perfect, but that's all right. Don't take it too seriously. And when we don't take ourselves too seriously, we're not afraid about what others think as much. So we use new idioms. We use new phrasal verbs. We just give it a go, even if perhaps it's a little bit wrong. And if we don't take ourselves too seriously... We're happy to talk to more people. We're happy to, for example, to give karaoke a go. Who cares what we look like? We might look a little bit silly sometimes. You know, we might not come across as we have the best level of English every now and then, but it just doesn't matter. You know, to enjoy English, we've got to let our hair down a little bit sometimes. And the idea of that phrase, to let your hair down, is, you know, I've not got long hair, but I know... Um, with sisters that do have long hair, when it's tied up, it can feel, after a while, it can make you have a bit of a headache, can't it? It can make your head feel a little bit sore. And the idea of this idiom, to let your hair down, is, you know, you take your ponytail out and the tension just goes. Oh, no, it's kind of a relief of pressure. Well, it's the same, you know, when we let our hair down, we, we don't take ourselves too seriously. We kind of relieve that pressure and just go with the flow. Maybe we could adopt more of that mentality when it comes to learning English. Just go with the flow a little bit more. Don't take yourself too seriously. Also, an idea that I wanted to suggest to enjoy learning English is writing. I feel that at the moment, we're not writing enough. I know I don't because everything is on computer or phone. But how about writing with pen and paper? Yes, I mean, an actual pen and paper. How about sitting down and writing? 
but I'm not talking, you know, writing words and definitions. Write about something you enjoy. Or well, here is a suggestion that I recommend to many of my private students or those on the GSO English Club. And that is so to write with your friends. Um, and a great way of this is choose a TV series. So let's all of your friends, you know, you, you take a brand new TV series on Netflix, let's say, or wherever it is, or your chosen streaming service. And you watch that series. So one week, you all watch one episode, either together or individually. And then each of you write a report of that episode. So you write about what happened, your opinions, you talk about the characters, what you liked. And then, so you watch the episode each week. Then at the same time, you present your written reviews. And this is great for so many reasons. One, we practice our writing skills. Two, we're practicing putting our observations onto paper. And a lot of times it is easier to write what we think than to speak. Thirdly, we're thinking about sentence structure. We've got time to think about what words we want to use. But the great thing about this exercise I absolutely love is that when you actually meet again and you talk about what you found interesting, you read out your written reviews, all of you will have different points different things that you focused on and it it creates a it creates room for discussion and debate particularly if it's a bit of an interesting series so try that mate you can do it with books book reviews shop reviews restaurant reviews your opinions on travel writing as a community as a little group is such a a brilliant way of learning to express our opinions and just enjoy it. So give that a go. Start writing. Even if it's on your own, write about your week, write about a holiday, write about absolutely anything. Now, we're not looking for perfect writing. You know, this isn't so you can hand it to somebody and they check for spelling and grammar mistakes. It's simply to put your thoughts onto paper in English. That is it. Okay, the next suggestion I have to, to help you enjoy learning English is to treat yourself. Now, if you've seen Parks and Recreation, you will know the treat yourself. But treat yourself. Give yourself rewards. Of course, you have to accomplish something for the rewards. But, you know, if you, um, let's imagine that you say, right, this week I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something in English four or five times. Maybe listen to four of my YouTube videos or you go onto another podcast like Luke's English podcast is fantastic. Go onto his channel and and you listen to, to four of his videos um, and that's your goal for the week. Will you reward yourself? Maybe you go to Starbucks and you get that chai tea latte or maybe you treat yourself to, to anything that you are interested in but have a reward system. So maybe your idea is if I if I can have a conversation if I can talk to somebody in English this week, then I'm going to have a reward. I'm going to reward myself. It doesn't have to be expensive, but it's just that idea of rewarding yourself. You know, you need to be proud of yourself. And I think sometimes human nature dictates that we cannot be proud of ourselves. Um, I'm not saying to be to have too much pride, you know, to be over proud, but there's nothing wrong with being proud of yourself. There's nothing wrong with being proud of your achievements and accomplishments. Um, so treat yourself for that. Whatever that treat is, you know, think of something you like. Maybe it's a certain bar of chocolate. Maybe it's, I don't know, I guess it all depends on, on where we are and, and, and our current situation. But don't be afraid to reward yourself. Um, and don't be afraid to be proud of yourself. You know, And that being proud of ourselves will help us to cultivate a positive attitude towards learning English and that's what it's all about and the last point I wanted to share about to enjoy it we spoke about not taking it too seriously but don't be too hard on yourself stop beating yourself up if you have a week where you don't have time to study English you don't have time to do anything in English you know don't worry about it just go on to the next week. 
Okay. Yeah, we could have studied English that week, but the reality is we didn't. We can't go back in time. We can't change that. So you just move on. You move on to the next week. Um, but don't be too hard on yourself. Or maybe you're having a conversation and I've seen so many people do this where they come away from the conversation and they analyse everything they apparently did wrong. Forget all the good things you said. Forget all the words that you pronounced correctly. They don't matter because as humans, it only matters when we make mistakes. That's all we focus on. Well, let's stop that. Don't be too hard on yourself. You know, OK, we look at areas that we need to improve. That's absolutely fine. But stop beating yourself up for a lack of perfect English. Stop comparing yourselves to others and just be proud of yourself and just keep going. If you don't have a good week in English or you don't have a good day or maybe sometimes you have a work meeting and you think, oh, man, I didn't do as well as I should have done in that meeting. OK, that might be true, but move on. Stop dwelling on it. Stop dwelling on the negative and make it a positive experience and start to enjoy it. So there's some suggestions I have for you to enjoy learning English. Study somewhere new. Mix it up. Play some games. Get singing. Get writing with your friends. Reward yourself. Treat yourself because you deserve it. You should be proud of yourself. Don't take it too seriously and don't be too hard on yourself. Please, guys, make sure you keep on enjoying learning English. I know I've been through different stages with different things that I'm learning and some weeks it's really good. I love it. Other weeks I hate it. But let's just keep on enjoying learning English. But thank you so much for joining me today in this week's episode. If you have any questions at all, please let me know either in the comments on YouTube or you can email me at gslenglish one at gmail.com. Any uh, thing you'd like me to talk about in future episodes, just let me know. I'm here to help. And also, don't forget that if you would like to learn English every day with me, you can you can join and enjoy the GSL English Club on Patreon. And also, it helps me to keep going with these podcasts. But yeah, you're doing well, guys. Enjoy it. Enjoy the process and I'll see you all very soon. Have a good one, guys.